How do you do, sir? Hello. <laughs> so we're down one man. Yeah. I guess from the last podcast, we're down also two men. But Let me text them directly. Matt, <laughs> where is thy bitch ass? Where art thou? Matt. Oh, wait, that's a different Matt. What the fuck? <laughs> oh. I've done that before. I have like three to four mats in my phone. And one time, one Matt I know is like a guy who, you know... He, he his trade is some special special things. Oh, like and I sent him. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> but I I sent him um, like just some random meme. I was supposed to send you guys, and he just sent me back. He's like, lol. I'm like, fuck. Okay. But uh, oh, dude, I think I sent this one girl. She like really likes Metal Gear, and she calls Snake Snake Daddy. So I sent like a picture, and it was like the it was like that meme where like the Pope is holding like a disc or something. It's like this. It was like Metal Gear or whatever. Yeah. And then um, the guy's like, what the fuck? And I'm just like, I'm pretty sure she would enjoy this picture. And then I'm like, it, look, it's like Pope. He likes Snake Dead. And it's like, dude, wrong number, bud. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, that's some shit right there. Yeah. Oh, she, who is this? It? He didn't even, <laughs> he's called me before, which is the weird part. He's like, who is this? Can I grab that pad real quick? Yeah. Snatch yeah. that. Snatched that, that, that golden pad of questions. Yeah. Oh, yeah, of course. I gotta change his last name. I didn't know his last name, but it's bad. Alright, what do we got here? So, I feel like Matt always takes the devil's advocate side. Yeah. So, what side do you want to take? Um, I guess I'll do. Yeah, he's not gonna make it tonight, but uh, I don't know. I could do devil's that. advocate. I mean, what side do you. What, for what? Are we gonna do the AI topic or which one? Which one are we going to do first? <laughs> okay. I decipher. Look at Matt's like scribble, which is so hard to read. Oh like some of it you can read, but then some. It says, Another communism, th does it lead to millions of dead? <laughs> dead? Wait, um, wasn't that last? It week? was, yeah. yeah. Did, did we solve that? Um, or did we kind of just... We, I think what we really wanted to talk about more was postmodernism, because we didn't really talk about it last mm. time. We had really veered off with the what we're talking about determinism. Gun control, determinism. <laughs> gun control was, yeah, but determinism. Only. If you want to talk about gun control, I can actually talk about that. All right, you got more opinions? Or more oh, yeah, I've been effects. doing a lot, of, a lot of reading and, and watching. And All right, watching. shoot me up then. Okay. Um, how do you feel after the Florida shooting? What do you, what do you think we should do? Um, maybe more gun control, but not gun banning. First, like, it's just not practical, like, with our culture and how many guns we have. Mm -hmm. We're not going to take away everyone's guns. And I yeah. thought that would be the greatest um, answer to it anyway. It, it wouldn't be, because yeah. it's, it's such a huge part of our culture. I mean, obviously, it's a weird culture to have. It's like shooting guns, but it's a yeah. part of the world now. that You just can't take away guns, because yeah. the point of having guns, well, I mean, not guns specifically, but... Um, the Second Amendment is to be able to protect yourself in case of a tyrannical government yeah. or, you know, obviously outside forces. Right. And people are trying to supersede that, and they're saying that we don't need it. And I'm like, do you see the types of governments that are out there? Have you looked at North Korea? Have you seen Have you seen anything about what happened, like 9-11 or anything like that? Obviously, there's some things that go into it prior, but that is a type of ideology that wants to destroy everything outside of it. Well, I mean, would you say that that's rampant in Western countries? Because I mean, you get that in, say, North Korea. Like terrorist attacks, or just no, like, just no, like the, the ter like yeah, like no, like well, I guess more like those tyrannic tyrannical governments, because they can't happen anywhere theoretically. Oh, yeah, yeah. But it's I, like, I, I mean, you don't really if see you that look in Venezuela. Yeah, kind of like that. That's going a lot more socialist. And, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> everybody, yeah, yeah, everybody, no, everybody I mean, their people are on a huge diet plan. That's you know, yeah, oh, <laughs> starvation, not self-imposed. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But um, I, well, I mean like in western because like obviously the americas are western influence but technically they aren't considered western just because i think mostly just because they're poor <laughs> but uh but i mean like say like europe and i guess you know Japan. I mean, do you see or... that well you see that these countries their reach is getting out there like you did you hear about I don't remember which European country it was, but it was, I think, around between 2003 and 2009, I want to say. It was a few cartoonists. They wrote something that was a little bit of a parody about Allah. 
Oh, France. <clears throat> yeah, and they got like death threats. Yeah, and, like, people rioted over that because they did that, and I don't, I don't, you know, I don't know French law or anything. I don't know about their um, exact terms on freedom of expression and stuff like that, freedom of the press and whatnot. But um, there's that. Um, I, I'm probably butchering the French, but like Jesu Charlie, that's what resulted in that. Because like I think a few years ago there was an actual terrorist attack on them. Yeah, yeah. There's like a bombing. I, I heard about that. That was a big one too. I don't remember how many people died there, but that was a big one. And if that was in like what 2010 or something, yeah, and I heard about and that, like that right? This and I decade. wasn't looking into like news or anything, that was a big thing, yeah. So I think that was around 2009 when that, that, uh, yeah, went down. I want to say within the dec- decade, yeah. So, um, but she, but um, well, just I to just, get back to that, I would say just the reaches, I think the reaches like they can get out there, but uh, uh-huh. I, you know, if you look at statistics in terms of gun violence there's about 30,000 people killed in terms of gun violence but there are about 3 million lives saved Up, upwards like that that's the peak of it and people say like 200,000 to 3 million people so like what does that mean say <clears throat> um usually I, mo- okay. usually most gun violence that uh, statistically I, i'm guessing it's around i think 70 percent. don't quote me on it this is mostly what i've heard i've looked into it too but um most gun violence is people defending themselves. Right. That's, that's also considered gun violence, but people defending themselves, and that's yeah. the vast majority of um, people getting shot is them protecting themselves within their house and stuff like that, you know? And them shooting other people? Yeah, 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 so. Okay. It's just, they're, I, I understand, like, the retort in terms of, you know, kids kids dying, these these schools and whatnot but it's uh you could teach them though I think yeah manage. there's i think there's a lot that we can do that isn't just banning the gun outright because they're like oh we need a butt ban ar-15s yeah and people call it like an assault rifle but right like, AR, like ar doesn't even stand for assault rifle it just so happens that the company that right. made that gun their initial or their um yeah their initials are AR. ar yeah uh, i don't remember the name but that's what it was yeah, yeah, I remember I heard that it was mm-hmm. an, an automatic Yeah, it's a semi-automatic it's, rifle, but obviously yeah. if you have a really fast trigger finger, it can basically be automatic, so. <laughs> then Twitter fingers. <laughs> but, um, yeah, no. so then, but if you told people that, they would switch to the gun that's more deadly, so it's not just about banning guns, because they also call, call it either banning semi-automatic or automatic weapons, which civilians can't even get automatic rifles, like they can't own it. Right. Um. But if you say semi-automatic, that's every single gun, more or less. Like some, there you know, there's bolt action. And stuff right. Like that. That's not really guns some, that people yeah. use today. You can't buy a sniper. At least I don't really know people who own snipers. Besides, like if they keep it in like a gun range or something, yeah. I'm not sure how that works either. Yeah. Um, but okay. you know, pistols are semi-automatic. Shotguns are semi-automatic. It's just you. If they switch around to whatever gun that they feel like is the deadliest, it's just gonna. It's they want to ban guns outright, you know. And they've they've pushed that. People have pushed that in Congress. They've wanted to ban guns outright, and they've done that in Australia. Have you heard about that? Yeah. They uh, they initiate like a, a gun buyback where they buy back all yeah. the guns for their. I think Miles talked bought. about it. Yeah, and um, we can't really do that here. <laughs> so well, I mean, guns, e- but. even if they did, because that would put us in debt. Yeah. We already are. Billion, so. Like, yeah, but so it would just be horrible for us, obviously. But people will be like, oh, you could just make money. And I'm like, well, that's a problem that you want to solve. Don't just, oh, well, let's just do it for this one thing. Because that's how it happens every single time. That's how we get into more debt. We're like, oh, let's just do it for this one thing. We're doing, you know, we're getting better. Let's do it for this one thing. And they have an exception here, an exception there. Um, but they bought back all the guns and the violence didn't get any better. <laughs> Yeah, cause I mean, can, obviously, you can wipe out most gun violence if you ban guns, but how many more people are going to die because they don't have the means to protect themselves? True, and I guess they'll just you know get to stabbing. Yeah, <laughs> right. But I guess the argument against that is that um, you know, because like some people would say that, oh, well, if you make guns illegal, people will just start buying guns illegally. Yeah, so there's it's no a, way to ultimately get rid right. of guns. Right, mm-hmm. but then like the argument is that it would. What well, you're arguing is that we shouldn't ban something because people are still going to do it anyway. And if you apply that logic to any crime, mm-hmm. oh well. Yeah, well, yeah. That's can't... that's also my thought process. It's like you, 
make something a crime and although it doesn't happen entirely like like seatbelts when they seatbelts used to not be a thing right or um speed limits used to not be a thing when cars were first invented and when they put in i don't know if it was singularly but also i'll just say plurally just to cover my butt here um when they put in speed limits and made wearing seatbelts the law um traffic deaths went down by at least 35 percent if not more yeah so i could see that you know and obviously i'm sure people killing other people went down when however long ago they were like okay killing people isn't cool yeah so it's a gradual thing it's but i obviously i think it it depends on exactly what you're doing that for because sometimes it can hurt you in the long run sometimes it can help you in the long run so it really you have to look at the stats what it really does and yeah i don't know it's a really touchy thing but uh yeah, yeah but that's about most of uh what i've been reading within the past week about it oh i got you it's only been a, well i guess it feels like a lo- longer time since the last time we did because we did it on thursday so it was a week and an extra day yeah yeah uh, I guess something that came up. So, um, and I guess maybe it's more of an American issue rather than any other country. Mm-hmm. But I guess like it does relate to postmodern. But um, would you say that uh, free speech is under attack in the U.S.? Yes. Uh, Canada obviously has yes. the yeah. I I think that if you're going to a country that's a lot nicer and it's uh, like as worldwide renowned for being like a you know a uh, gentle i guess i wouldn't say gentle but a kind country like canada and their freedom of speech is under attack also but they never really had any law that protected their right. freedom of speech it's just that they never had anything that infringed upon it until B- bill c-16 um <clears throat> i think that it somewhat is yeah absolutely right. like forcing people to say these like they've done it they right. did these types of things i mean obviously there's a state and a, a federal level but they did this in um, New York, where the the law, like it even says on there, people who have put it there, they admitted that technically, you even if you accidentally do it, you can right. be fined. Like people can take you to court or f- sue you for that, and that's that's the whole thing is that if you do it by accident, you can still be under attack, and that's why people don't want it a lot because if you accidentally do it, you're not just going to go up to every single person and like, oh my god. Uh, what's your pronoun before we even start a conversation before I even like, yeah. assume anything that's just it's yeah. crazy so yeah I absolutely do think it is right because I was just thinking if you think about it politically like in the 40s and 50s compared to now I would say that if anything we might have more freedom of speech in a certain degree because I mean obviously back then we had the uh, committee of anti-American affairs or something like that which you know if you said anything at all left this you would probably be uh, taken in so you might be thrown in jail and obviously if you right after the 50s after World War II I'm pretty sure if you had any sort of Nazi paraphernalia you would probably be looked down yeah upon. yeah absolutely and that's that's definitely something that I would say you can't really do in this country because that's the basis upon which we um we congregate that's the whole point is that we have a left and a right side obviously there are some sides you know <clears throat> there are independent sides or this party or that party and if that party gets big enough that'll overcome being democrat and republican but usually there's always two sides because you can really only have that you'll only kind of vote that way or at least it's been that way nobody's forced anyone to vote that way but that's just what it comes down to is majority um I guess discussion on issues comes from one side or another. Mm. Um, but I, yeah, I think that's definitely an attack on free speech as well. I, I think societally we come to terms by saying like, oh, we don't like a certain form of speech, like any, any Nazi, Nazi propaganda or racial slurs or stuff like that. We just say, hey, that's not okay because that actually did have certain implications and that was used to repress and oppress people and right. in a time where certain peoples didn't have rights, actual rights, and they weren't considered people. And I think that's definitely a lot different today because it, they're saying that they don't have, we, we have white privilege and they don't 
have the same privileges as us. And I'm like, well, you are absolutely afforded every single right that we are. I understand institutionalized racism, racism because I mean, even police officers have come out and say and said that it's there, that it's it's a part of it. And we, I think we all agree on both sides that the police force needs some type of reformation or yeah. different training or stuff like that. So it's no longer just like overt, because uh, yeah, like the law kind of just says it plain. Yeah, I no mean, discrimination it, on yeah, race. Yeah, and I, I understand that. Like, n no discriminating in a workplace. We definitely want freedom of, of, of opportunity. That's a, I think, a maxim, an axiom that any type of um, system wants if it wants to work right and not really, or at least eliminate most of the problems that it could have. Yeah. But um, I guess it's like the I think it was Karl Popper who said <laughs> who said uh, the paradox of free speech where it's like in a society that allows free speech we accept most free speech but mm -hmm. paradoxically we don't accept anything that's too either far left or far right because then that would mean that everyone else's free speech would be removed in a sense because you don't agree with them. Like, I don't know if you've yeah, ever heard if you're of not, that. you're not agreeing with one side or something that, or you're not. Well, because essentially it's like if you let, say, a Nazi get in charge, then they would do, you know, fascist things. Yeah, fascist absolutely. Fascist actions, which would then take away other people's rights. And you could also but get that it, with the other totalitarian side, you know, if you get yeah, a fallen communist. Yeah, for sure, but I think that it's paradox of freedom of speech that it allow, would technically allow these things to happen or it, it allows for the possibility that these things can happen because right. um, like the paradox is essentially that in a f society of where you know freedom of speech happens you actually have to deny that speech deny certain... things that would lead you to that point of not having free speech or something. basically yeah so um you know i don't know i don't i wouldn't necessarily say that it's denying it because we have freedom of speech as a law, as a right, but I think um, people choose what they're voting. People, you know, choose what they want in turn. Like they they base their vote and they base their words off of what they feel like they need or they want or what they're they're speaking for, and. Um, I don't know. It, it really is. It definitely is a paradox of it for sure. Yeah. Um, I. Because if you do just have it, full on out. If someone does win and that person is. Yeah, uh, and they get to that point. But I think that, you know, if if you want know, because we we have enough information, we have enough access to information to understand that. The. These people can say these types of things, but we know that we don't want it, and we know that these things lead to not having it. So we, we have also the right to vote and say that oh, this is not what we want as well. And I think that that goes hand in hand with it as well, freedom of speech and voting as well. People have the freedom of speech to preach uh, preach to you more or less what um, they can do for you or what they want or what they think is right, and you have the freedom to vote with oh this is this might be what i want or this might not be what i want and i don't know it's the the freedom of speech allows us to um congregate and have forums and debates and everything where we're two people like two people or multiple people on both sides of the issue or any side of, it, of any issue um can come together and let the people decide more or less like we can't force them to pick these things you can have to influence them with money but <laughs> true. unfortunately true so i don't know that's that's something that i've always thought about is that if you allow freedom of speech you allow these people to say these things but that's what it, what it comes with for sure and we're the only country in the world that um allows for freedom of speech i think we're the, the only country in the world that has a the right to the freedom of speech. So. Probably. At least the first. Yeah, One the of the first. The first. But, oh, yeah, definitely. Just because, like, other countries m mimic the Constitution and the Yeah, for sure. So. But I think we're technically the only country that has it written down that we had the right to freedom of speech. But, you know, there's also, like, things like hate speech written down. And I think it's funny 
if you look at hate speech, it's really just a category that we, there's no real words written into hate speech. Like if you look at the legislation under it, it's just, there is this form of speech called hate speech and that's something that we can define in a court of law, so to speak, or wherever it may um, go down, you know, in a, in a, um, a company, on school grounds, whatever, what have you. But it's something that we can, it's a category that we can define some type of speech. Um, basically saying that this is too far, you know, we shouldn't say these things. But when <laughs> well, I've had uh, um, somebody talk to me saying that uh, if you're not forcing these these things, like what what do you think about you know people saying the n word and, and hate speech and stuff like that? Well, I'm like, if you look at hate speech and the legislation around it, it doesn't define any word under it. It's just a category that we can define. A speech under in a court of law like saying this wasn't that I'm not um, yeah describing that too well but I think you understand exactly what I'm saying. yeah yeah it's just broad so mm -hmm. anything could technically be considered hate speech but at the same time nothing yeah absolutely so, so it's, that's you, you get vague. into the court of law saying oh this can be defined in this specific event or occasion as hate speech so Yeah, that's that's a tough that's a tough uh, it's a doozy. idea to get around. It's very paradoxical, especially when people use that as a retort against people who are saying anything that doesn't exactly line up with oh. transgender um, or LGBTQ something LGBTQIAQIAP. I think it's something I've heard key? some people extend it to that point. I'm not sure, but plus they they use that yeah plus they they, they use that as that, and I'm like oh is the P supposed to be like pedophilia? <laughs> no, no, I think it's pansexual. <laughs> oh, okay, because like I remember someone tried to include it with LGBTQ. <laughs> oh whatever. my god! So it's like oh my Did god. Did you hear god. that France? Uh, uh, I don't think it was France, but it's definitely European. a European country that was. Um, taking the age of a consent down from whatever it was to 15. Mm. I mean, I think in Nevada it's 16. Yeah, it's 16. Some places it's 18. Yeah. I mean, I don't... I don't know. Like, <laughs> It's like, 16 in some places, but socially it's just not acceptable for anybody to go for... Like, I, don't, I think it's somebody half... Like, you take half your age plus seven, and that's about the extent that is like generally accepted I guess uh, so I mean or I'm 20 right now and I think it would still be kind of weird if I dated someone that was 17 just cause you know yeah, they're still in high school like, you think about it this way if somebody is not that that was an end all be all rule yeah yeah but... for sure think about it this way Andy oh, I'm gonna throw Andy under the bus here <laughs> no I'm just kidding um, we'll just say it's a fictional Andy <laughs> it's Andy. somebody that we knew somebody that we were all friends with that Andy was also friends with um, <laughs> wait wait is this serious like it's some other guy yeah yeah oh okay um, he was 19 and they're talking or sexually um, involved with somebody that was 16 Mm. See, that's like that's like weird, but think about it. Like, none of these people have had twenty years of their life yet. So, is that really that strange? Like, I understand, but then again, if yeah, you look I at mean, that, three years is a lot of time for people that age. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, 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 I <laughs> like really... to me, it's just kind of like I can understand if you're like, say, you're a senior and you're dating a junior. But so what about it's like fine a sophomore that it, or a freshman, right? Like I can understand, like if you're dating someone still in high school, but then it's just like if you've already been out of high school yeah, for yeah. a while. So think about it like I that. don't think you should start dating someone in high school <laughs> or uh, like at least sexual until, interactions, right? With Especially that. But then again, like if you think about it, like you say you just graduated high school, then no. Uh, see, so what, like what is that cut cutoff point for like company uh, comfortability? Well, I was going to say, like, if you're in college, but not everyone goes to college. I'd say I mean, somebody probably within 
what seems just generally acceptable nobody even bats an eye is somebody within two years before or after you i feel like that two or three years just about once you pass high school and you're dating people about uh, that are all i guess i would i would agree with that because like i'm thinking like when I was a senior, I knew no freshmen. I knew a few sophomores, and then yeah, that's when I'm like I, knew, like, I guess I could have, you know, dated a sophomore girl. I still would have found it weird, but it's eh, whatever. Yeah, yeah. You, when you think about because it, because you know that at, that at time, least. Yeah, at that point, it's not like I you're knew, just like, like hanging around the high school and then just picking up every yeah, vulnerable. I mean, you know, not that that's how it happens. But. Yeah, and uh, it's it's weird to use that as an argument as well because think of schools that are like a class of one hundred per each. Because we um, had we had about like fifteen hundred to two thousand students at Liberty, right? Yeah, something like that. Much. So if you look at somebody or a school that has about three hundred students, you probably know or know of everybody that's in school. So. Uh, yeah, that's true. I guess in that sort of case, it mm-hmm. might be more For sure because it's a small town. Yeah, it, I would yeah. assume it's a small town. <laughs> so- <laughs> Dude, what if you do that and you're you're like you and your girlfriend are homeschooled? Dude, you can't date someone from British. Yeah. <laughs> I, that's just, see, it's always like, where are the lines? It's just what, how you feel at some point. Because I feel like we have to draw some lines. I'm, not, I'm obviously not there. and so That's yeah. a no, really weird situation. Yeah. But when people talk about stuff like that and say that's not socially acceptable, I'm like, well, where are the lines? Because mm-hmm. in some cultures, it's not. Some cultures, it's this. Obviously, it's, it's social and that's within a certain... Yeah, I mean, there's area, but some countries where they marry a girl when she's twelve. Yeah, or 13, it's like, like so. forced forced marriage on them. So and well, I think everybody in the West can say, okay, maybe not. Obviously, you're kind of a small percentage that's like, eh, who cares? <laughs> <laughs> but, <Man love. laughs> but mostly everybody's gonna be like, okay, that's yeah, most street. Westerners. So I think thirteen, everybody's like, yeah, fourteen, mm. nah, <laughs> fifteen. <laughs> I feel like that's why France or I, it might have been France yeah. so they're, they're lowering it down to 14 because they're like eh. it's the French <laughs> so are you really like, surprised it's yeah, the French I mean, like they, they just have... look at Camus <laughs> <laughs> smoke cigarettes because he was like um, I could be the cool guy so why not that's, that was his philosophy True. why not be the cool guy yeah and then I don't know I guess it just depends because it's sort yeah, of like it really depends because like I, I still kind of think it's weird and obviously like it's legal at least but like if i know mm-hmm. someone who's in their 20s and they're dating someone you know that's 20 years older than him at least that is kind of weird to me it's a bit strange i don't you're not just like oh my god you're exactly you're a pedophile because they're an adult yeah they're so they're adults. conscious of what's mm-hmm. happening mm-hmm. but then it's just like because they're teenagers they're, they're, they're able more... to consent to what's happening they've had yeah. no experience in their lives and i think that's what uh yeah they just don't have that experience and also they're not like fully developed in their brain not yeah, like yeah. they're retarded but <laughs> they're not going they haven't gone through the, the full human prefrontal stage. cortex and all yeah. that so they aren't really thinking rationally mm-hmm. for women it's set like 16 to 18 that's when they fully like go through puberty and like their their brains are done developing obviously they'll still have some physical changes right through, like 25 to 30 or something yeah and so will males but males finish developing around 21 I heard even 25 for the brain at least. Yeah, something like that. I've heard some parts of the brain, Mm -hmm. but like 21 is probably just when physically everything else. Which is strange that. Which is unfortunate for (laughs) little Peter, (laughs) my little Peter, little Peter, Um, (laughs) my Peterson. (laughs) We're gone. Yeah, no, I think that's funny that um, uh, males stop. You know, you, you said that they generally or they could at least for some cases yeah developing at 25 yeah that's at least happening people are in psychology it's generally um there's a general consensus that iq starts declining after 20 um yeah yeah so but they they i'm so glad that i like i enjoy working out because they say that physical like exercise is the best way to stave off the de- decreasing of IQ so I'm just like yeah you can push it for like 10 years at least yeah no, we, uh, yeah. maybe hopefully. I don't know um, fingers are crossed have you taken IQ tests uh, no I mean I don't have you yeah, yeah. like online or like some actual online but oh, okay. I, I've taken like a, a wide variety of different tests and gotten the I, I might as well. I'll do that spring break while I'm still 20 yeah, yeah, that's that's why I wanted to do it now because I was like, oh, I was at the peak, and this is right. I'm like exercising, so isn't it's right it, before that starts declining? Isn't it more or less still 
Because I know that there's like two types of intelligence, like crystallized and fluid or something like that. I'm not entirely sure if those are yeah. the right words. Well, I, I think IQ is, is a um, a general defining factor of like your mental capability in the world per se. You know, it's I mean, nonetheless, not exactly 20, that. But Twenty is probably your best. Yeah, that's, time to do it. Yeah. So I've gotten it's all downhill a general. Um, one thing told me I had an IQ of one fifteen. I'm like. I'm not, that's, that's insane, there's no way. Men's, uh, dude. I, I forgot what it's called, but it's like, uh, I don't know, like, like, what did you, did you just do, like, IQ test on uh, Google? It or? was free IQ test on uh, okay. Google, and then. I, like, I, I like do you remember up, the website? Was it, like, anything Um, Just, like, a free IQ test, and I did, like, the first. No, I'm just saying for that specific result that said 150. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, like, I, had, you, I had looked up, I had. I was just asking, like, if it, if you think it's reliable, or if you were just um, doubting yourself. Well, I looked up yourself. on YouTube, and that's the, like, I, I don't think that test was specifically reliable, because I knew on a few questions, I guess, and I feel like I just got a few, a, it was 20 questions, and I knew about, I'd say, 16, 15 of them, but I feel like a three I got really lucky on by guessing it was just pure luck on those, and it said 149, and I was like, uh, I don't think so. <laughs> so I did a few others, and one of them put me at 80, and I'm like, I don't think so either. <laughs> just because... Like, wait, 80? Just 80? Yeah, Flat that's 80? I'm like 80, 79. I was like, I don't, I don't think so. Yeah, that's... And like, you know, and the you U.S. Have Army, you can't less... even be admitted to... Uh, admitted, you can't enroll. At, right, you have you an need... IQ under 83. Yeah, no. Because you'd be more of a harm than a good. <laughs> but yeah. I, I remember I took one of those military, I forgot what they call it, but those tests that you can take. It's not an IQ test, but it's like a general intelligence that they make mm -hmm. everyone do. And I got like a near poor <clears throat> score. It was like out of 90 or 99. It was 100. Was it, but it was like, like basic ass questions? Yeah, it was just like math, science, and then mechanical ones. But I think they discounted that just because like, it was in high school, and yeah, since obviously no we don't have that. Yeah, you could have learned that. At yeah, that point. we don't have shop Early classes stuff, anymore, so. Uh -huh. But yeah, yeah but, I, got uh, a de I don't. That wasn't a cue, but I'm, yeah, I, I got a general consensus of about around one thirty for my IQ. So I was like, okay, I'll take that. <laughs> I had taken. A, I had taken like. Did you take like the five mean? sick? Huh? Did you get like a? Did you add like? Did you get a mean of it, or did you do a median, or like how'd you? Oh uh, yeah, more or less. I had, I had added up. Oh okay. uh, Like my highest ones were like between 140 and 150 which was like two of them and then or three of them and then the worst ones were like 80 uh, <laughs> i was like there's no way yeah there's no. no way that could be or like 80 to like 110 or something but yeah about in the middle yeah you I've got, I've got some like 130s too so i, I like i'll just wow. stick around 130 unless i like pay 15 bucks for an iq test it's like 150 questions i'm like mm. what do you have to do in those by the way like i um some of them are um like pattern if you notice patterns just uh, how fast you can do it too it, it also depends on how fast you do the test and and how many you get right um but there are patterns which is like a you know you have this line this line and this line or it's usually like about nine patterns and then you have to pick one that's missing and what would go there um some is vocabulary like you know um synonyms more or less oh yeah or antonyms um some are numbers, like uh, patterns and stuff. Uh, that's kind of it. It's basically patterns just in a different form, mm. more or less. It's not like, oh, what's one plus this? Or like, it'll, it'll do numbers, like, oh, it'll say three, then seven, and another number, and another number, and what's the pattern between those, and what's going to be the next number? Oh, okay. Yeah, so I'd say keep, an, keep a calculator on hand, because sometimes the numbers get really fucking big, and I'm like, I can't. There's no way that I could do this, but that's I understand got, the pattern. That's, understand. How you, that's how you got your 149. <laughs> no, well, that one, that one test, which was the one that I had, it was the first one that comes up. Uh, that one didn't have any adding on there. It did have some, but it was it was some small stuff. Uh, but keep a calculator on hand because it'll get to big numbers. But you'll it, it starts out usually small, or it'll start out big and then get to small uh, numbers, and then you you have to find the pattern there. What's in between those? So, but some of them are just so abstract. I'm just like. I'm guessing. And that one, I got 149. I know that there was, I was like on the cusp of getting between like 130 and 150. And if I would have answered one more question wrong, I would have gotten towards 130. <laughs> so I, I have two answers that I guessed right. It's like Johnny has there. five apples, Sally has four. <laughs> it's like that. What did Shakespeare mean? Yeah, some questions will be like, they'll give you some extra information that means absolutely fucking nothing. And 
I'm guessing it's testing so you can separate that from the... Yeah, yeah. It's just like, like how fast you can do it as well. So yeah. I felt like I was doing it pretty fast. I went through those things pretty fast. What unfortunately happened for some of them, <laughs> which you can't really take the same quiz again because it'll be the same. It'll be the same questions, more or less. Well, some of them it'll be, just be the exact same test if you retake it. Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> but uh, I was finishing one. I really had to go to the bathroom, so I was like, "Oh fuck, I have to answer these last three and then press enter, to take a shit." <laughs> right. <laughs> but uh, the first one that that uh, one I got one forty nine. That was like the first one that I took when I was looking for it, and I was like, as much as I love for this to be right. <laughs> It's, as much as I'd love for my IQ to be 149, I absolutely know that it's not. <laughs> I want one. But um, I, don't know. I, I think I've come to around 130. So I'm, I'm right with what that. I can do. I'm right with that. Yeah, man. You can come back next time and you can tell Eventually us your IQ. Eventually fornicate yourself. <laughs> uh, 140. <laughs> <laughs> Basically. <laughs> Endorphins and, and serotonin. Um, let's see. Neurotransmitters. Anyway. <laughs> Should people be punished for their... Oh, this one was about determinism. That, that was the last question. Yeah. How do you feel about that whole conversation? Um, I think that we aren't as in I mean, control we as have. we think we are. But I don't know if we're... <clears throat> I want to say we're full on determinalist where it's like we don't have any choice. Because yeah, I think because we do I have feel a like if you, if you took that side, you're... You would basically just be watching what happened. Yeah, you'd be a robot. Less, you would just be watching everything that happened. It'd be like, uh, I guess, I don't know. Like, it kind of reminds me of, like, The Stranger, where, like, in by Camus, mm -hmm. where it's sort of like... He He's just, like, like, going through the motions and... Yeah, and, and so... But yeah, so I, I understand that for some people, but I think that's just the loss of... Uh, desire in the world or something mm. have you read crime and punishment no not fully i'm, gonna, I'm sure if you've read the beginning of it no um, spoilers no but uh, no it, it, it that, wasn't a spoiler but you well the basic plot i think is basically well known it's a guy who kills someone and yeah it's the it's psychological like, oh, he journey ra he of rationalizes it. killing somebody right and then he's not the same person after he kills him like just immediately Which makes sense, yeah, yeah of course like he's just a completely different person like in the beginning of the book it has a lot of build up yeah which I liked and then it happened but it happens so quickly in the book when he kills um this person and yeah. like as you're reading through it like I, I, the, the scene's gruesome like even reading it I'm just like wow <laughs> wow <laughs> Of course, I have to think that all up in my head, but a lot of stuff that I've seen, I've seen a lot of like gruesome stuff in certain movies and whatnot, so I can put that together. Um, it's a little different when you see it in real life. I remember... Yeah, uh, for sure. Oh, one sure. time I saw... It, I was driving my way to work, and, you know, traffic was stopped, and it was pretty fucked up, because I remember when I, you know, first got into the traffic, or when I first saw it, I was like, fucking shit, who had to die to make us slow down? It was just like, oh my fucking God, someone actually did die. And, like, they really tried good. to cover it up, the police, but, you know, it was such a long stretch, but it was basically a guy, his bike, I don't know what exactly happened, I but mean, it obviously I was going to say he was on a bike. <laughs> and he wasn't wearing a helmet, so oh, you yeah. kind of see, like, the scrape of... The when did that happen? The, uh, a while ago. It was, like, last year during the summer, I want to say. I'm not even sure. It was, like, on the I-15. I swear to God, when I was at my orientation for my new job, somebody told me about... Somebody who had died within the last year because he wasn't wearing a helmet on a bike. So maybe that's that same person. It might be. It might but be. But it's like they, hurt his, they were related to him too. And I was like, oh, oh that sucks. Shit. But it was because we had somebody in um, the group that was like a motorcyclist. And he did like, he went 240 between Vegas and California. I like think. the speed? Yeah. Like, like more or less. You know, obviously. Yeah, I'm obviously. Sure there's, there, there's a law in Nevada that if you're over a certain point away from a car or uh, the the motor the motorcycle that's going fast than you, like I say, if it's going too so fast, because they can't reach the speeds. Like police cars can't even reach the speeds that motorcycles right. can. So if you're at a certain distance away from them, you you don't chase them. Yeah, you yeah, just yeah. let them go. And I'm like, I never thought about that, but. <laughs> At one point, that seems stupid, but then again, if you really think about it, that seems smart because there's no point in chasing. You know? Yeah. Um, 
But yeah, he's like, I do wheelies and stuff like that. Like, okay. <laughs> yeah. So it's a little different. Like, I remember I was thinking about it. I'm over it now. Like, fortunately, I was it. I yeah. remember it was like the lady. I even saw the lady just morning. She was like on her knees, just like. Yeah, you know, was, she like her face up and like she was a mess. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, no, I, f- I forgot where I was going. I think I was headed to Dostoevsky or something. Oh, no, you're saying no, where I was headed, yeah. Um, I was headed to work or something, and this car had caught fire. Like, on the way, like, it, it had just started catching fire, but it was, like, full on. It was blazing. I forgot where I was going. I was heading um, east on St. Rose before it starts mm-hmm. curving to get on top. Oh, highway. yeah. And right, you know, where that park is there on my right? When you're driving towards there, uh, like, our car had caught fire there. So I pull over, and a whole bunch of people got, had sat there. And this guy almost died because he was stuck in the car. Oof. And it, 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 like, actually exploded while it was there. I was oh. like, oh, my God. I could feel the heat, and I was, like, 100 feet away. It was crazy. Like, I, you could see the tires popping and everything. This woman, she, I think she broke her back or something. It was crazy. Damn. I thought that just happened in GTA. <laughs> right? And I was just, you know, the innocent bystanders who, like, drive by and, like, get out and they look and they, they do go away. It was crazy. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Um, but anyway, back to free will. But, yeah, determinism. Um, I don't know. Because, like, I would then argue that maybe to a certain extent it is. Because, obviously, it <coughs> yeah, might be a psychological thing mm-hmm. because it's everyone's an individual. So, obviously, yeah, it's different for but everyone. Of course, everything that goes on in your brain is a chemical reaction. Right? Right. I do understand that. I absolutely get that. But saying that everything is set and will happen. Like, I understand if you rewound the clock... And everything happened, if you just let everything happen, didn't insert anything, it would happen the exact same way. I get that, you know? Yeah. And <laughs> that point that I had brought up to Matt, remember the first time we talked about it, and I brought up that thing about the atom? And um, that's when you put um, that topic in, you see, like, I had sent that Michio Kaku oh, uh, yeah, video, yeah, yeah. and he was talking about that. He had brought that up where, you know, the atom, like the nucleus, it's... It's in a superposition of like everywhere and nowhere at the same time. Right. If you look at it, it's going to be in that one spot. Right. But you don't know the speed. You know, there's absolutely no need, and it won't affect anything if it was in a different spot. So that's right. why I was like, it. That that was I had some disconnect on like bringing that to the conversation, but I knew that that I meant something there. No, I could see the connection with mm-hmm. it. But so I that that what I was going to say because you mentioned brain connections, why not? I guess then you might even say that addiction might be an argument for determinism because like we're try- starting to see it as a disease rather than a choice because yeah because it, it is it's absolutely some it's a body's reaction like it gets used to it there are some things like i think there are things that aren't necessarily have an addictive um agent to it like say alcohol or weed and stuff like that alcohol you can absolutely get to the point of needing it people get addicted to it like if they don't they will die you know if they're they're drinking so much and their blood alcohol level gets to a certain point they have to keep it there or else their body goes into withdrawal and they had seizures and they could die right um <clears throat> and i don't think that's psychological psych- psychological addiction that's actual addiction to alcohol i think psychological addiction like are... physical like with the actual brain chemical because well, like obviously like neurology and psychology uh, they're interrelated yeah, but they're yeah. technically different I don't, things I don't know the actual definition of psychological addiction but what I think I've come to it's a chemical addiction at least like the brain does well kind of yeah I, I'll give you that I, I will give you that but I think it's your brain getting into a certain state because it doesn't need it like if you don't smoke obviously you might be like a little tired or something so I, I wouldn't necessarily call it an addiction to the point where it might kill you because nobody's ever died from smoking weed nobody has right. ever um, been injured by smoking obviously they there's some side effects like short-term memory loss right. or drowsiness stuff like that but I one thing I had thought about when I was thinking about I did I, I smoked some last night <laughs> and I was watching some stuff I was having a really hard time focusing and then I I had this little wax pen and I did that and I was like, oh my god, every time I think about something and I feel like I'm having a breakthrough, it's just, it's blowing my mind. It, it's crazy. Now, obviously, it's just me having a normal thought process, but when I happen upon something, I'm like, oh my god, this is a lot more amazing and it feels a lot more amazing coming upon this because I'm high. Um, but I was thinking that 
Why do people get the munchies when they smoke? I don't know. I mean, you're I the... feel like people have looked into that, but I feel like part of it is the brain, because you know, it, your brain gets used to um, conducting itself at a normal basis, and it tries to, you know, um, operate at the lowest possible energy consumption rate, caloric, I guess, caloric consumption rate. Because I mean, even if you're laying down doing nothing, you still burn about yeah. 1600 to 2000 calories just doing nothing <clears throat> and when you go to sleep you burn more calories than you are when you're awake because it's your brain's going crazy you know right um but I, I was thinking that when you smoke weed and then you actually start feeling it and it's such a crazy reaction in your brain that it's trying to um i guess optimize itself for um, operating at that function that it burns a lot more calories and that's why people get hungry or at least at, at initially uh, I'm not sure if that's anything that's just some conclusion that I've come to by looking at it or thinking right. about it so I don't know Wait, that's are something you, I thought of last night at the college you're at right now GCU right mm -hmm. are you I'm, a psych major or are you going to uh, be a psych major I'm technically major? an econ major right now but I'm only in my because um, I took a year off when I graduated high school yeah so i'm still only i'm just finishing more or less my general ed stuff <clears throat> um but i might be transferring this fall semester right my fingers are fucking crossed are you gonna be a psych major when you start yeah then? for sure and i think i want to also go an english major as well yeah you I, don't, me. I don't know about at the same time just because i need to work because i moved out yeah i'm not sure how i can do that um i mean i think what i'm thinking is i'll do my psych major stuff um, fall and spring semesters and my summer semester I'll do any extra courses that will go towards English. an English major so when I get my bachelor's in psychology which you can't really do much with psychology major that's right. why I want to I want to do an, an English major as well so I can have something to rely on until I get to that and plus I think being an English major would help out as a psychology major yeah because um, I was th I don't know <clears throat> how it works exactly but could you turn a minor into a major Cause I'll, you, Are you trying to do that? No, no. I'm just saying, like, if oh, that's if a possibility I, if I went for you. For anyone, I guess. Yeah, anyone. yeah. But I guess in a specific instance, I could do psychology as a major, English as a minor. And then after you're done with the psych, turn, can you do like turn that into a minor? Because you still have the credits for yeah, it. Yeah, so, so you're you working towards the still minor. pursue. A, I, I guess I'd have to ask about that. Yeah, because I don't know. Because like that, that's probably how minors work. I'm not gonna lie. Because <laughs> that that's how it. I've always thought that that's how it could work. Because a yeah, minor is sure. essentially. I never really went into the semantics. You're taking just like half the classes for You're, that's a, a how, that's major. That's how that works. Because I think that's how when I went to the counselors at UNLV, that's how they basically they started. That, that's are not you how going they. Going to CSN right now? Or no, I'm in UNLV to... right now. Or did you? Were you going some at CSN or something? What I did with CSN is I graduated with. Um, Associates, Associates of oh, Arts, no emphasis, and then I uh, just, just doing a transfer. Okay, so basically just your general ed stuff. And then, basically. And then, I got you. And then I transferred to UNLV, and then that's when I decided to do English. That was this spring, right? Yeah, okay. this semester right now. And then, um, no, but yeah, like when I went to the counselor, um, it just seemed like, because I'm just paraphrasing essentially, but it seemed like you just take 20 credits, 20-ish like credits the, for... The minor? This, yeah, like when, when you're doing a minor, you're doing like 21 credits of a certain... You know, degree or so department. That, department. That's, that's like a quarter of it. Less, yeah, that's less than a quarter because it's like 120 credits for right. for a bachelor's degree. Right. right. And so then, I would guess that's like, well, oh, okay, we'll we'll call it about half of an associate's. Right. More more or less. Yeah, because I was just gonna say like I, I would assume then because you do have those credits, mm -hmm. you can then after getting your major and minor, you can then make that minor into a major just because you already have some credits. You might have to I talk to a counselor and see if that's yeah, how. It, I, I don't know if it would technically be turning a major into a minor. It's just, other way. Let, or minor yeah, a minor into a major. Into a major um, but I mean, I, I guess I could see why you'd call it that. I'm yeah, because you're working towards. Oh, I'm just suggesting it's that the, like it's the same exact, exact same classes that you'd be working towards that major, except yeah. only part of it. Yeah. So, no, I, I, I'm just suggesting that to like that yeah, way. You're so like, that might be because I'm also working on that in the spring and fall semester, so I can yeah. understand that. So you're working on it still, but not mm -hmm. worrying too much about, you know. Yeah. Not I'll, worrying have, too to, much I'll about have to see about that. Because you, it's what, 16 credits to be a full-time? Uh, yeah, because I have. About 15, 16 credits? You might actually just need 12. 
12? Is that how many uh, classes? Is that four classes? Oh, because most 12. of the classes are three credits, right? Yeah, because okay. I'm doing... At GCU, it's four credits per class. Oh, okay. So, yeah, so four classes. I didn't give a shit in high school, so that's why I had to go online. <laughs> I didn't have the grades to get in UNLV, but I knew I had like the, the capability and the understanding. Is that why you went to CSN for like a while? For a beginning? Yeah, that's why, that's why I started there, and then I dropped out because I was like... I had went to CSN right after I graduated high school with right. everybody else, and then I was like, I can't do this. <laughs> yeah, I had, I could do it. I could do the work. Right. I had no drive. To you do just, the work. yeah. So. That's how it is. I mean, you just finished high school, so that's how yeah, a lot of college I, kids are. I had are. gone through what, eighteen? Well, I guess fifteen years of forced going to school. I needed some time. Yeah. <laughs> I needed to, like at least a semester or two to, at least kind of figure out what I wanted to do. Yeah. I mean, even when I went to GC when I started, I had no idea. I still had no idea. But now, like, I kind of want, I really wanted to go to astrophysics, but that just seemed way too hard for me. I did not like math enough. It just seemed How were like, you ma- in, at math in high school? Because um, you, you would probably have to, I'm, 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 taking, I'm guessing you never took, like, calc or any of that. No, right? I didn't. You remember, yeah. uh, what did you take freshman year? Did I you took take al- geometry. Al- geometry. Yeah, at freshman year, I was Algebra 1 honors, but we had that teacher that... Miss Gandalf? No, we had no teacher. Oh, we, oh It was yeah, that yeah. sub. Remember that class that had a sub? Oh, okay. It was like a different it. sub every two weeks, so we never had consistent homework. We never had a consistent curriculum. We, they come in and be like, oh, where'd you leave off? And like, mm, 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 mm. This wasn't real homework. So we got nowhere in that class, and that fucked me over for geometry, and then we had candy corn, Miss Gandalf. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Cunts aloft. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, and then I had um, Algebra 2 honors with Mr. Isaac Jr., mm. so that was fun. I didn't have a hard time. I liked it. Like, he was teaching me. I just kind of fell off because I didn't care at that point. And then senior year, I really didn't care <laughs> as no, I was I driving. And I was like, Meh, I'll get an upgrade to pass, and then that's it. Mm-hmm. So... Yeah. Oh well. Astrophysics. Yeah, but I'm glad when you transfer, you just have like a you have to pass or fail, right? That's how much your grades are. You basically, basically. start off with a C or a, I don't know exactly how it works. Yeah. But I'm, I'm glad because when I started GCU, I was I had the drive to do all the work that I needed to do. I just didn't care enough to get good grades, so I have enough to like transfer with when I get the credits. But um, okay, that's good. When I you know when I get there and I actually know that the what I want to get out of uni- uh, university. I knew I wanted a bachelor's, or I'm, I'm pretty sure I have to go for a doctorate. And that's what I wanted to do, so. Dr. Coburn. <laughs> don't ask <laughs> for CPR. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, psych, I don't know. You're going to be a psychologist, not a psychiatrist, right? Psychology. I want to be a clinical psychologist. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, but I also, that, that's why I want to do the English, too, because I feel like I would want to write as well at least I I enjoy writing I enjoy writing up essays for school so it's a good time I don't dislike it my current class I'm taking is just like a um, a school specific class it's called Christian Worldview 101 at GC because it's a private Christian school yeah Um, the reason I picked it because I knew their education would be good you know Christian's there are at least some religious schools. It, it was also renowned for having a good education, so I was like, okay. Yeah, like BYU. This like, yeah, this is something I can do for at least the time being. Um, <clears throat> any stereotypes that you could see coming from somebody who is religious towards atheist people, it's all there. It's all there. Which I'm glad. Like, I have an opposing view to, like, all these people. I'm not saying, like, I don't, I don't believe in God. I'm just... When, I, when people ask me that, I'm like, I've never been given any evidence to prove nor deny, so I can't say. If you right. look at it as a scientist, you, you don't be, it's not really a belief in something. It's, it's about proven or not proven. You know? right. Like They don't believe in their theorems. They're just doing math that applies their theorems and proves it correct in a sort of way. Yeah. Or at least gives it some type of basis. Um, so I can't prove it, so I can't say it's not there. So I used to say atheist for a long time because there's no proof, but agnostic. I'll, I'll say agnostic because all have you. I don't know who it was. I think it was Nietzsche. Um, he had lo- different levels of agnosticism. I don't know if he was the one that had set that out. I don't know. That sounds familiar, but no, I don't know the person I said. I, I have to I look. I was it reading up. The, a book called Nietzsche on truth and untruth. Have you seen that book before? Um, it was it was 
authored by somebody else, but it was like a yeah. culmination of Nietzsche's on truth and untruth. Right. Um, and it's it's funny when people call him a nihilist, and I'm just like, he's not. He's not a nihilist. Like he understood that um, religious texts were the basis of Western culture and stuff like that. You know. Um, but uh, he he had, I, I guess he had laid out. I I haven't read a lot or a lot of his works, but he had laid out some type of scale on how agnostic to believer to like atheist you were. Agnostic obviously being in the middle, and then you were like agnostic something, agnostic something, and then atheist or agnostic this, agnostic that, and a believer. Uh, so I would definitely say. That one just before atheist, <laughs> for sure. That's that's that's. Uh, I feel like I've landed on finally. That's good. I think. Have you heard of Christopher Hitchens? Yeah, I. I Christopher I, or Richard Dawkins, Daniel Dennett, and Sam Harris. Oh yeah, dude, the atheist triumvirate. There, there's four of them. Oh, quadrilateral. Right. They, people call them the Four Horsemen. Well, yeah. When Christopher Hitchens was still alive, they called them the Four. Or the, them the Four Horsemen. Yeah. Which I remember. Um, have you have you watched Christopher Hitchens stuff? I was he the one that taught. I remember someone. No, I don't think it was Christopher Hitchens. It was like a comedian, but he was uh, highly atheistic. Um, when like someone asked him, like, "Do you believe in God?" and then he was talking about, "Oh, why would I believe in a God that has parasites that eat children's eyes?" Yeah, I don't. I don't think it was him, but yeah, no, I've heard I about. Think that. I think I heard. I just Christian. forgot his name. It's like a comedian writer, but not one of the yeah, no, I, four I horsemen. I think I know who you're talking about. Maybe like Louis C.K. or something like that? No, he's British. Um, British? I, he's kind of so overweight. Yeah, but... I can't think of it. I'm sure I've seen it somewhere. Um, but you should definitely look at Christopher Hitchens. Like, he, he's obviously... They don't call themselves atheists. They call themselves secular. Like, obviously, that's the yeah, different. general group that they were, like, conformed into with their ideas. But they consider themselves secular. It's yeah. different. I remember, um, um, but Christopher Hitchens. If you watch his debates, it's scary. I, I'm so like, as much as I'd love to see him alive, if I had ever had to debate him, if I obviously when I get to that point in my life, if I wanted to, um, he's never lost a debate. If you watch any of his debates, no matter who's it against or who it is against, he's never lost, and it's it's amazing to watch because he just. Let him, let him rest in peace if there's a God. <laughs> yeah, I heard the same about Sam Harris. Sam here? Harris is really tough to debate. He's like, he, Christopher Hitchens is a lot more aggressive. He, he'll he let people like go first, but he always just... He's able to just hit yeah. it out of the park. Everybody knew it, and everybody was afraid to debate him. Everybody on the left and everybody on the right. He was like more left-leaning. but uh, Yeah, he wasn't like a leftist. He was yeah, just like but he's center left. left. Yeah, but... Uh, Everybody knew him for being like unbeatable in debate. No matter who they were, atheists, believers, they just didn't want to debate him. Sam Harris, yeah, no, he's um From what I heard, they, I, I've watched some of his like I, I have watched like a few TED talks, but I never watched a debate. So. Yeah, he he's cool to watch debate too. He's he went to this Islamic temple or something in the United States and he debated one of the one of the head guys there, which was really cool to, to watch as well. Or no, that was I think that was Richard Dawkins actually. So it's really fun to watch them just debate this stuff. I think Richard Dawkins like on his Twitter He, he created a... meme. Yeah. You yeah. know he created the idea it, it, of like meme. genetic memes. Yeah, it's... well he, it was about um er... Because it wasn't like the memes, like uh, the memes we have I guess are cultural memes, but yeah, he's yeah, the first but one that's the, like, the idea memetics. of a meme that was yeah. created by him. I'm just like it's funny. How? It's funny. <laughs> it's really funny. It was like he, in the 80s, too, so it was yeah. before like, the internet he was even a thing. He the, created um, the religion around the flying spaghetti monster. Oh, he was that. one? Yeah, he, he just brought up the idea. He's like, because he would always go uh, um, debate against uh, religious people, and he'd uh, say, well, what if I made a religion, a religion about a flying spaghetti monster, and then people took it up, and it's actually like a, you know, the... Um, yeah, the bumper the stickers the and Republic. all that. Kekistan? Yeah, Kekistan. <laughs> Jordan Peterson makes a lot of references to that because yeah. it's really funny. But um, Jordan Peterson and, and Sam Harris actually debated. Oh, Have you seen okay. that? about what? What was the time? Uh, it was about truth. I think that's what it was about. So they were uh, against each other? 
More, more or less. You, you can. Um, or were they just having like a discussion and they would sometimes. It was like, it was, he was on, Jordan Peterson was on Sam Harris's podcast. It's like, um, um, Waking Up or something. I forgot what it was called. Um, but Sam Harris has a podcast and he had Jordan Peterson on there two times. And I was like, <laughs> my brain, if my brain could not, it did. <laughs> brain new. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, I remember, um, I, I heard about them, but like that, uh, like I always, anyway, like what I was going to say about what you talk, it's like on his, on his Twitter, he has a shirt that says, we are all Africans. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, he's it's referring true. to like, like the anthropological yeah. one. Yeah, I just think it's funny because you know he's like a pasty white guy. He's like, "You're <laughs> all African." <laughs> but no, um, yeah, no, it's uh, it's pretty funny. Like, because when you talk to him, it's like, oh, he's like a evolutionary biologist. Yeah, like, that's, obviously, that's what he does. So you right, can't just so. be like, oh no, you're wrong or something. Oh, you're, right, you're trying to call you're... yourself black or something. He's like, well, obviously not. I'm just saying that we like if you trace people yeah. back to a certain point, we have found that you know. Yeah, obviously. But um, yeah, I I heard about them. And I really wanted to get into them when I was like, early high school, late middle school. But then it's yeah. just like, ah. Eh. I heard about them like when they graduated high school. I saw one thing by Christopher Hitchens, and I was like, instantly sucked in. Just like when I saw one thing about Jordan Peterson, it was just it's like a vacuum. But um, he sucked me in. He gave you the suck. Gave me the suck. <laughs> the suck. Online without even touching me. Mm. Mental suck. <laughs> More or less, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I was watching Joe Rogan's podcast, and I watched the one with him. Is Joe Rogan, like, right-leaning or libertarian? He's, he's more left-leaning. Oh, is he? He's oh, okay. definitely seen it. Um, I don't know much about him. So. You should definitely watch his podcast if you haven't. Um, him with Jordan Peterson. There are a few that are just widely popular. I forgot who else he had on there. Um they didn't really have that fucking bad Barbie or, you know, like the fucking Cash Me Outside. Or was that a different? I guy? don't think I don't think she's on there. I, did you see that? It was like an Instagram post, and I don't even know if it was Joe Rogan. It was just some no, bald guy on, on a podcast. podcast. Right? Yeah, I think I put that in our group chat. Was that Joe Rogan or no? <laughs> no, it wasn't him. Oh, okay, I'm it just, wasn't him. I, but, I, I yeah, just confused I know him about. with, I guess, other. Yeah, it was so funny, and I was just like, uh, why is she still popular? <laughs> I don't Honestly, understand. I don't even think she's as popular. I think maybe because yeah, she has uh, a yeah, she has a brand. Now. Yeah, well, or, like, she she's... also like ripped off Champion, that Champion brand. Uh, Did you see that? No, she ripped off Champion brand when she became popular. I forgot what she we had put on there, but she ripped it off. Yeah, no, and I mean, I think she got sued or something. Now she, she got taken to court. Yeah, no, she, no, it's just like I think now is that like obviously she's signed with some companies and whatnot. So oh yeah, for sure. Like they like people make the mistake of fucking doing shit with memes, like because like she's a fucking and she's it's a, meme. a terrible meme. She's a meme, but it's just like because like you know if someone gets famous off a song or whatever the fuck or like she like obviously she didn't get famous off a song, but you know people like I mean, when people get famous off of a song. They're expected to make more songs, right. you know. She was one just a wonder. meme. On she wasn't even a one-hit Doctor. wonder because she was on Doctor Phil, and she, there's no indication that she was rap. She was just a white She's a one-hit wonder in a meme girl sense. that, yeah, <laughs> really and into like, like sad. how about that? And I'm like <laughs> into a bonnet. What? What did you say? But I think it was just funny because people don't act like that on, yeah, you know, people like Doctor Phil or Doctor Oz and stuff. Oh like yeah, that. No. I mean obviously it's. Staged. So she didn't care. Stupid. Well, it was staged, but I think she didn't care enough to like go along with the staging. So she's just like, mm, I'm gonna do my own thing. <laughs> and she did, and she became a meme. Well, good on her. I mean, good on her. She's you know, sure, I guess. Capitalist sense, and she's making it in the world. So uh, I'm definitely not jealous of where she's, she's making at it in because... the capital sense. Huh? She, wait, what did you say? She's making it in the capital sense. Yeah, I mean, she's like capitalizing. This is on... why we need socialism, guys. <laughs> <laughs> no more bad Bobby. <laughs> no. But... I, I'd say just uh, go the other way. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. No, but um, uh, I definitely say I'm for a democratic, um, socialist country, or like somewhat socialist leaning because you can see that in the Scandinavian countries, um, they're doing well. They got it. They have good social nets. They've had it good for too long. Gotta stop them. <laughs> no. Let's let's make them go fully socialist and destroy their country. Oh yeah. Countries, I guess, because Scandinavian hammer and sickle. Anyway, it's no. Have you seen the protests against uh, Jordan Peterson? Are they when, really? when he came up, like for the first time, he spoke out against like the transgender movement. It wasn't even against that. He was just against compelled speech. Yeah, 
Um, yeah, no, I've people, seen... like, took up hammer and sickle banners and, like, screamed against them. Like, do you understand what this sign means? It's... Uh, <laughs> I think it's so funny when people say like Soviet Russia back then was a lot worse than um, Nazi Germany because they're like oh obviously they want to take over the world but Soviet Russia did as well they got to the point where they were trying to take over the world they got um, it they were like the largest I don't know if they were the largest empire you might still say the British Empire was the largest but mm -hmm. they were pretty large I yeah, think the largest they, they nation a, state at least yeah for sure so. and they killed at they People estimate up to a hundred million people. Hundred million. People. Holodomir was a lie. No, but um, no, yeah. It's weird because it's so funny. Russia. Actually, it's funny though because like you'd probably think of all the people that um, you know, like all the fucking, like the people you're talking about, like the people with the protein sting Peterson, the really edgy uh, transgender, you know, made up gender people. Like they would probably be sent to a gulag by Stalin. Oh, for so sure. Funny how Absolutely. <laughs> oh my God. So Absolutely. they don't like, uh, realize have, the irony. Have you, read, kind of have you read the gulag archipelago? No. Have you? I, I'm, I'm like in halfway through it. And, oh. Uh, they were never shown like the actual laws that were putting him in this place. Even when they asked when it first came out, they were just not shown. Because they, they didn't have railroads back then, so there was no real easy transportation between this huge the biggest country i think russia is the biggest country by land mass and yeah in the world right still is and then yeah. obviously in the soviet union when they had more countries than mm -hmm. yeah they were yeah they, they were trying to move after they had taken down us germany they're trying to move west and take over europe <laughs> um but uh there was no way to get messages or any type of like actual physical information between these areas because they would say oh anything that you want on the left side is the left side of russia is on the, the east side of russia yeah and, and stuff like that yeah it was so but it was like suspicion of um like conspiring against the state just suspicion just thinking that you are like if somebody said that you were you'd be taken in and you'd be given 10 years that was like the base thing more or less eight to ten years was the base giving no evidence no nothing some people just wouldn't say anything and they'd let them go but if they're you know if you if you give in because it's a, like the state coming in saying it they would just destroy everything that you have take you with them i'm reading it i'm just like <laughs> some of these things you could imagine we would do like torturing people like if you had to get creative to the point and in terms of torturing but some of these things that they like he, he writes down that they did there i'm just like if you think about how bad they they gave it to you know jews and gypsies and everybody in nazi germany think about what they did here <laughs> it was disgusting it was it's like it's tough to read people call it tough to read and it is pretty hard to read like just every time i see something that I, i've never thought of i just like stop and like people can think about that <laughs> people can think of that and i'm human so i at some point i could have thought of that you know yeah that's crazy i just stalin did nothing wrong <laughs> but uh i love the slav Zek. have you seen that vice interview that he yeah had? he has the portrait of stalin. <laughs> of stalin it's so funny um but i think he was divorced now but he was married oh yeah he I, I, I think she died or something or maybe divorced i'm sure know. i'm sure it's definitely actually like, i think he was married a few times yeah like I'm there sure was like a like, model oh my god you're super communist so, uh, uh. <laughs> like he was married to a slovenian model and then the last time was like with the slovenian philosopher but divorced full time and i think he there was like a i forgot where he said it but like he had a kid and like the kid said fuck i i'll, I'll see if i can find the interview but it was pretty funny his but, kid they interviewed his kid no they it, it was shizek and like basically like he hates shizek because he's like a dog and he can't believe he's related something like that it was kind of funny oh, i'm sure but he doesn't give a shit <laughs> yeah that's true <laughs> he literally doesn't give a single fuck that's he why he really... needs to debate peterson because peterson gives yes, a shit they do they i think they are i think they've set up some type of debate and i'm just like peterson cares a lot and just love why he's smart and doesn't give a shit <laughs> so that's what i want i really want them to like talk and i feel like for a while i felt like they were on the same side but obviously i didn't know that Subway was actually on the side of communism and stuff, but he knows that that ideology isn't going to go anywhere. And he knows the type of problems that it has led to. So he's like, yeah, theoretically, the, this is good for everybody, but 
you know, <laughs> it, it's done this, but I'm I guess maybe it was like what Matt said, where he's like, technically it's happened historically, but there's no definitive guide that. Yeah, there's no definitive, in. but it's just like if you look at every single time it's been implemented, it has... propaganda. propaganda. <laughs> no <I'm> kidding, but <laughs> yeah, people say that. But um, uh, I'm just like, look at socialist Venezuela. I mean, aren't the Scandinavians socialist to some extent? Well, they're, they're also a democratic, democratic so they're like yeah. dem- socialist democracy. I don't know exactly how they term it, but it's still democratic. It's not full on socialism like Lenin. And that's when. Uh, Is it a mouse book? What the hell? Oh, you know what? Wait. Oh, Miles. Miles is doing something. That scared the hell out of me. That's funny. Oh, Miles, you scared me. He's fucking with us. Anyway. I'm sure he's not. Wait, wait, did your girlfriend, like, did, I remember, I I think it might have been last week or two weeks ago, but like, was your girlfriend really socialist? Or like, was she like really debating it? Or were you actually going to break up with her because... She no, was no, 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 no. I, I never said anything like that. No, if you, if you're watching, I'm sorry. He was just kidding. No, yeah, I, I didn't say I was going to break up with her or anything like that. No, yeah. Um, but was she really like siding with him? I don't think that she's ever said up front that she's a radical femi- feminist. But you can deduct. I've I can deduct her ideology in the way that she talks that she kind of is. Don't deduct. Know? Seduce. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was going to sound better, but no. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm just like... Okay. I mean, I, I will debate you, but of course, I believe in you know a libertarian mindset and you have the freedom of choice and you can believe what you want, so... <sighs> Be that as it may... I don't support <laughs> the way you think. So, but the the advantage that I do have that she does, the like think in that way is that I can test my theories and ideas on her. I can debate it against somebody who is like strictly not for the things that I'm saying, you know, or just straight up without even like looking at what I'm saying. It's just against it, mm. more or less. So it's a fun time. It's a good time. Mm. I'm, uh, I absolutely love her. She's she's cool. Is a uh, and he's a not partner. just saying that because we have him in a corner. <laughs> no, it kind of looks like a corner. <laughs> okay. Okay, corner. No, yeah, but absolutely. It's uh, genuine, genuine. I mean, because I I understand her viewpoint as well. You know, I I saw the way she does for quite a long time. I mean. In my household, my my dad was always like, "Any Republicans were stupid." Blah blah blah. You anything that's Republican, turn it off or whatever. I mean, he wasn't saying that legitimately. It was it sounded like jokingly, but anytime it would it would come on, he's like, "Turn it off." And um, so I had taken on a like strictly far left leaning Democrat Democratic uh, point of view on a lot of things, and then. I started reading into the things that were. Did you read socialist. capitalist propaganda? <laughs> Did I read Capital? <laughs> El Capital. Um, I saw you no, need to read, I, comrade. I, I do want to read that. I saw you had to read, comrade. Nothing else. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only thing that you need to read. Is That's the only thing of, you can read. Any type of any type of Marx literature, and you boom, you have learned the absolute fix to everything in the world's problems. That doesn't sound like dialectical materialism, comrade. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. No, I mean, if it's I don't, resolved. Do pe- like, to people, would you consider that socialism came from Lenin? No. I mean, technically, commun- like communism is usually associated with Marx, but there were actually communists before Marx was around. Yeah, yeah. As yeah. well as socialists, so. But I think, like, Marx was the first person to actually put into yeah, cause the he... widely known type of work that communism. Oh, yeah. He wrote the Communist Manifesto, mostly. Mm-hmm. Engels yeah. wrote, like, a little bit at the end, but he was the majority. But, um, um, I don't know. I mean, I guess they're the ones that shaped it mostly, but you. I guess they put it into, like, an actual, like, firm. Yeah, like an actual type of ideology. text. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, but I'm trying to think. I don't, 
I have been looking, obviously there are a lot of countries that it's hard to look into their specific past, but once you start looking into older big names, you see that a lot of older big names are in some way tied to another big name that's in a different country and then this and that, or like they, it's slightly not, not tied in, in the sense that they're like in contact or anything, but they had some type of relation like <clears throat> um, Stalin what you know in Russia and they were against US and then you hear names about in in the US and then you look into them and stuff like that so i'm just trying to think of another country that had actual socialism before lenin came in there into russia probably not i don't know maybe you could but i don't know what would you would you call lenin the father of socialism I would call him the daddy of coming. <laughs> <laughs> the coming, the the second coming of the communist Christ. Dude, he's a commie and I want his commies. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know that um, Rasputin was a, like, obviously there was Nicholas um, the second was like the last star yeah. of Russia. And Rasputin was a special friend. Like if you read, um, not... Um, Leon Trotsky in the book that I was reading the history of the Russian they mentioned Revolution. him in the Russian book you gave me like yeah, his yeah. relationship but with the, the family uh huh and he was Rush like the family's special friend like that's who they would conspire with and talk about like the, what they were going on that's who they get advice from was yeah. Rasputin and then people are like oh he was this other guy that was kind of against him in, in, in some sort of way and I'm like no they were together like they were they didn't say their name directly, but, or they, they, they wouldn't say Rasputin's name, like in terms of uh, um, Nicholas's journal, which he didn't really ever talk about with the political thing. He's like, I went to the pool, I bathed twice a day, went to dinner, and that's it. He would never really talk about, because he didn't give a shit about political yeah. um, going ons, but obviously he was the one that ran all the stuff and he didn't give a shit. <laughs> um, but uh and then they they killed him they killed rasputin because people thought he was the second coming of christ in russia and they killed him rah rah rasputin <laughs> good up for the russian proletariat oh my god <laughs> i know it was them it was nicholas who made it happen because rasputin he went to like the small village and people were like oh he's the second coming of christ and it was his, his like image out there which was like holding things together and then he was just coming home drunk every single day in this little village and he was like bringing home a whole bunch of women whenever you go home and they killed him because they're like you're not fighting for the motherland you're just doing your own thing and this will fix our problems and then it made it a lot worse and uh oh, sorry. <laughs> here comes lenin here comes stalin Well, they're not Russian anymore. <laughs> <laughs> they're dead. Yeah. yeah. I don't know what else to say. If you lived in Soviet Russia, what time, what what period would you want to live in? <sighs> Probably when Nikolai Khrushchev was around, when he was the prime uh, premier guy, dude. <laughs> I think uh, were you say prime minister honestly I don't know because I don't know if it was a prime minister no, I, I maybe it's like the Soviet premier or some something like when that when was that what year was that uh, sometime after Stalin oh like right after I think you don't want to live with Putin why, why are you still saying it is Soviet Russia well I mean it's technically not Soviet Russia but you could still he was alive yeah. like, during the last few years Putin was in the war, right? Some type of war. He was part of the Cold he, War. I, I think he was, like was part spy. of the KGB. Yeah, he was, he was like a, you know, a spy or something. I'm oh, sure. part of the the Georgian Wars or whatever. Like the ones that were happened right after, maybe? I don't know. Okay. I'll have to look it up, but... All right. Um, we can talk a lot about postmodernism. Because it's such a small... like. I mean, if you look at Derrida or any of the French philosophers that kind of... I mean, they didn't call it that specifically. At least I don't. I don't know if they did. I haven't read their work. I want to. I'm getting there. Um, but 
it's such a, a non-concrete idea that it's hard to fully encompass it and like talk about the, the strict ideas of postmodernism. Like, I mean, we all know that post like there are an infinite number of interpretations to postmodern idea. Um, other than that, there are a few other things that are like concrete ideas. Like, I can't remember them, but so it's, that's why it's really. I feel like it's really hard for us to solely pin down one thing that we're going to talk about in postmodernism or like criticize some ideas of it. I don't know. Yeah, it's pretty. <clears throat> Have you come up with a um, a question that you wanted to? I don't know. I guess I'll stick with the last one, the neural link, the AI one. How are we going to keep up with automation? What can he put? What can we do in regards to AI? Uh, what was your question? Uh, basically, how can humans keep up? I mean, it's essentially the same thing, now. But I like what well, can I feel we like physically you should, like, do? Pinpoint down exactly some type of question. I'm yeah, because sure. I was thinking, like, if you know anything about like Neuralink, what Elon Musk is doing. Or, uh, uh, no, but I think that's something about being able to transfer brain, right? It's like how to uh, or, enhance human cognition. Uh, yeah, I've heard him talk about that. Like, obviously, I don't know if we're... we we're like it's the transfer element. consciousness between yeah. neural centers, but... I think that's more of rumors. Like, like artificially what? enhancing the human brain. Yeah. So, I'll that. probably just stick with that. Um, and I guess, like, the ethics involved. Uh, I don't know. I'll put that in. I'll stick with my question. Oh, is yours? More... more. More postmodernism. Okay. Did you ever watch that one like hour long video? Which one? They sound like on the group chat, like the in defense of postmodernism or something like that. It was like fifty minutes long, so I don't. Um. Because I only, think like, I actually watched that before you brought it up because oh, okay. we had mentioned, like, talking about postmodernism, and I had watched I think a 50, 50 minute video. It was in defense to postmodernism. Yeah, and I'm like, that's probably it. I understand that there are some ideas within postmodernism that we can abstract from it, you know, and and keep moving forward. But I don't think postmodernism postmodernism as a whole is something that we can hold dearly to and use as a, a form of philosophy and and keep in that whole f frame of mind and and move forward. Successfully. That's why we have post postmodernism now. <laughs> Meta modernism. <laughs> why not? Why not? It's better than two posts. All right, man. Well, no man, but we did it. Yeah, we did it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're getting out of here. Uh, Dos vidonia.